What is up, internet friends? My name is Curtis, and this is the first ever episode of Making Monsters, a new series where I'm gonna teach you how to make cool monster sound effects and sound bites in Audacity so that you can bring your games to life just a little bit more. For this very first episode, we are gonna talk about the nightmare outside of time, the terrifying Evelyn. Right now, on Low Initiative. back to Roll Initiative, everybody. On this channel, we like to talk about Dungeons and & Dragons and give advice to players and DMs about role-playing different types of creatures and characters. So if you're new here and that sounds like something you might be interested in, please consider subscribing. All right, so before we get started today, just make sure you've gone and downloaded Audacity. It is a free audio editing program. You can get it on the internet, download it. That's what we're gonna be using uh, in the video. That's what you're gonna see. Uh, but if you use another sound editing program or uh, are trying to do this voice through something maybe that uh, modulates and edits your voice live, a lot of these settings will still be useful. They'll still be universal. Uh, you just won't necessarily know where to click. So um, if you want to follow along, grab Audacity. Otherwise, just pay attention to the things that I'm doing to the voice and uh, things should end up sounding the same for you in the end. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is show you the voice that I'm using to um, start with, to create the bass Aboleth sound. Um, I've already gone in and pre-recorded um, a line that I'm going to be doing, and I'll play that for you here. Uh, this, by the way, is a uh, short little voice line that I wrote up using Apparently, the language of the Cthulhu Lovecraftian monsters that I found online, uh, it roughly translates to Children wish, priests pray, heretics question, darkness speaks, eternity trembles. And I'll put it up on the screen, uh, both the uh, translated version and the actual Lovecraftian version, but this is what it sounds like. So that is my voice completely untouched. That is what came out of me, uh, and that's the bass voice that I'm gonna use. Obviously, you don't have to do that exact. Uh, it can be something similar. You could just use your own voice and modulate it from there, but that's the voice that I'm going with. So if you want to um, try to emulate that sound, I have a couple of tips for what I've done. Um, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get really close to your microphone. And if you look here, I've actually got two pop and hiss filters on. And that's because getting really close, I'm going to be making a lot of sounds directly at the mic, and I don't want to be constantly popping and having my air hitting it and messing up the sound that I'm making. Um, the reason that you want to get real close is because a microphone will actually pick up the bass in your voice more uh, when you get in tight with the microphone. So here I'm talking about probably eight inches away from the microphone. It's about my normal voice. But if I get in real close and I talk real low, it's going to pick up those bass tones. So if you've listened to some of my other videos where I do my deep DM voice, voice that's basically all I'm doing. Um, so that's the first tip to kind of get that big, thundery, boomy voice uh, that these big, terrifying Aboleth monsters have. Uh, let's check my notes here. Uh, the second note that I have is that the voice is really just a big, whispery, rumbly growl. Um, you're not really making a lot of sound. It's not volume heavy. It's not loud. The voice just happens at the back of your throat. So what I'm doing is uh, basically really opening my throat up wide, uh, bringing my jaw down so that there's a lot of room to resonate back there. And then I'm just pushing air over the vocal cords and kind of letting it growl and rumble. So it sounds like this. <sighs> And that's literally just me. You can see it without the microphone. It's all happening right here. I can feel it flapping right there. And that's just my voice rumbling. 
It's really no more than a whisper. It's not terribly loud. Um, the microphone's really doing a lot of the work. Being in close like that, it's really going to pick up the the depth and the bass tones of what you're doing. Um, and really, when you start speaking the words that you're going to say, use your lips and your mouth to change the tone, to um, basically shape the words that you're making. Don't do it with your voice box. You want to do it with your mouth. So really, you're just creating that rumble. And then you're moving your mouth. And just, this is just constantly going. And then you're just moving your mouth around with it. Uh, and the last note that I have is that make sure when you're doing this that you record it in little bitty pieces because um, by creating that sound and pushing a lot of air through your vocal cords, you're going to get really lightheaded real fast if you keep going because it's just you're like blowing out hard the entire time. So since you're using a lot of air, you're going to have to take a lot of big deep breaths. And if you do that over a long period, you're going to get really lightheaded really, really fast. Um, so if you combine all those things together, uh, you will be able to generate roughly the sound that I created there um, when I played it previously. Um, I'll do it live here um, a little bit and show you what I mean. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go fun. Go fun. Already starting to get lightheaded. Let's take a break. Take a couple breaths. About to pass out. Uh, but you can see that's the sound completely untouched that I'm making, and that's what we're going to work with. So from there, we are going to go ahead and switch over to Audacity so you can see the wavelengths and you can see what I'm actually doing to generate these sounds. All right, so here we are in Audacity. This is the wavelength that I played for you guys earlier. Um, it's not the one that I recorded live with you, but it's the one that um, I had pre-recorded. I'm going to play it real quick, just uh, an excerpt for it so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, and then also I'm going to show you what we are shooting for. So you can see here we have a much different wavelength, and this is actually the completely edited version. Um, I went ahead and did this in advance so I knew what settings to do, but also so I could give you a quick example so you can see the difference between the raw one and the fully edited one back to back. So here is the raw one again. And here is the fully edited version. So you can see that is considerably more terrifying. So what I'm going for with this um, edit is that aboleths are huge. They're these big, massive creatures. Uh, they are Lovecraftian horrors that existed before the time of the gods. They speak telepathically. They're alien and terrifying and unknowable. So the layers that I create on this um, voice, this sound effect, are all meant to sort of um, reinforce those ideas. So let's just go ahead and dig in. I don't want to waste too much of your time here. Um, the first thing that we do anytime we're editing any kind of voice... Uh, is make sure that we touch up the audio first before we do any kind of trimming. Um, so the very first thing that we want to do is actually trim the breaths out. And we're doing that because an aboleth doesn't really breathe the way that we do. If you read the lore on them, they actually breathe through that slime that's on their skin. That's why they can breathe underwater and also out of the water. So we want to trim the breaths out because uh, your aboleth's just not going to be doing that. So... Uh, all you do is highlight over it, 
hit backspace and it goes away. And I believe this here is a breath too. <laughs> yep. So we're going to cut that out. And I think this one here. <laughs> Uh, this one, I don't think I breathed during it because it was one big long word. And then I think we got one here. <sighs> yep, that's a big one. So we'll highlight that, take it out. All right, so now all the breaths are gone. So if we start at the beginning here. <laughs> Sounds pretty clean, right? Sounds like he's just talking. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure we trim out any uh, clicky sounds for, from like clicking your mouse. Um, and I think I heard one right here. Usually there's one, um, at least if you record in Audacity, there's going to be one between each of your clips. Uh, and that is because Audacity actually listens to you right up to the point that you stop recording. So I think that was one. Oops, there's a little tiny one there at the very end of the audio. I got most of it. That's good enough. So some of those are already taken out, and I actually did that in advance um, as I was merging all of my clips together. We've actually got a little breath there. I took a... A little sniff in right beforehand, so we're gonna clip that out. Alright, and then there's a little click right there, it sounds like we wanna take out. And let's see if there's one at the end here. Yep, right at the very end. So you'll notice here at the end that I've also left a big gap of silence, and that's actually going to come up later. We're going to use that for our noise reduction. Um, so make sure when you do your recordings, you either leave it in the beginning or at the end, about two or three seconds of just room noise. Um, and that's because Audacity will actually listen to that and create the profile um, for the noise that it's going to take out. All right, so we've gone ahead and trimmed off the breaths. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and make sure that all of our spacing is how we want it. Um, and that's really going to consist of trimming these uh, spaces like this uh, between each of the clips and all of the vocal parts just to make sure that we get the uh, precise sound that we're looking for. <laughs> So right there, I think I'd actually like a little bit more of a space between that. I think it happened too quickly. So what we do is we put our little marker right there, we go to edit and we go to clip boundaries and we say split. And now what we've done is we've created two separate uh, sound files, essentially side by side. Uh, and I'm just gonna put a little gap there like that and then we'll listen to it again. I think that's good. To make it just a little bit wider. This is a big giant monster. He's not taking, or he's uh, taking his time. So we're gonna give him a little more time to work. Coffin. Coffin. That's good. So then what we do is we highlight this little section here. We go back to edit. We go to clip boundaries again, and we say join. And now we have rejoined those two things plus the blank space between them into one sound bite. Coffin. So I think this one's a little long, so I'm just going to trim a few fractions of a second out of there. Same thing there, it's just a little long. And one of the reasons that uh, I don't want those huge pauses will come up later. Um, we're actually going to affect the speed of how things play back. Um, so we don't want some of those gaps to be a little too long. So I think we're good here. Um, 
So this is our raw wavelength now. This is what we will use to apply the effects to make the sound. Make sure that you save often. Uh, you don't want to lose it and you want to be able to go back if you mess things up. So the first thing that I do once I start actually touching up my audio is I always normalize. And the reason that we normalize uh, is to make sure that all of the audio is within the range that we desire. Uh, if you look at the wavelengths here, you can see there's parts that are real big and loud like these, and there are parts that are real small. And some dynamic is good, we want that, but we don't want too much space between them um, because it makes it difficult to juggle the volume. So the first thing we do is normalize. So we double click, it, it'll highlight the entire clip. We go to effects and we go to normalize. And I usually like to, to do a three or four step normalization process. Uh, and then we do some things in between them. So my first is always a negative six. And you'll see that that really shrinks everything down, um, but it shrinks the bigger stuff a lot more than it shrinks the smaller stuff. So it's brought a lot of the volume levels a lot closer to each other. Um, if you listen to them now, let's start in a new place so we're not constantly playing the same thing. You can see that it's become quieter. It's not as loud as it was. Uh, but there's less variance in between the volume levels. So that's what we want. That's good. Um, now that we've done that, we are going to go ahead and apply our noise reduction. And the first thing that we want to do for that is we want to come to the very end where I left that blank space that I told you about. We want to highlight it like this. Uh, the more the better, but uh, usually at least a couple of seconds is good. And then we're going to go to effect and we're going to go to noise reduction. And we're going to say get noise profile. And now Audacity has grabbed this section. It's analyzed it for the random sounds that it hears, which sound like this. And you can just sort of hear there's some wind sounds, uh, some clicking in the background. So now it knows those are the sounds that we don't want. So we're going to highlight everything. We're going to go to effect again. We're going to say noise reduction. Uh, we don't really need to mess with what's going on here. The um, default settings are usually okay. And we're just going to say okay. And then watch the wavelength there. Some very subtle changes like in here and in here happened. And all it's doing is just trimming that noise off the edges. So now if we listen to it. Coven, go the after. I hate that click. I should have got that out of there. But you can tell that there's a lot less of that sort of just buzzy room noise happening around it. Um, so now that we've gone ahead and reduced the noise, we want to start bringing the volume back up. So we're going to highlight again, go to effects, and now we're going to normalize one more time. This time we're going to do a negative three. Uh, and basically we're slowly inching our way up towards the level that we want. So when we do negative three, you see everything gets a little bit bigger again. Um, but our levels are much closer together than they were previously. Remember that this was a little skinny line, uh, and now it's gotten considerably larger. So if we start there, it is much closer in volume to the loud part right next to it. Um, and it's also louder now that we've normalized up. So the next step in the process is going to be to equalize. So this is where we start to shape the sound in a way that we want it. Uh, the main difference between flat and equalized volume is just sort of that dynamic range. But also you can go in and you can pull out some of the stuff that you don't like. Um, so I'm going to start out with this flat and then we're just going to preview it. We've heard that a million times. That's what it sounds like on its own. Um, so if you go in, and let's bring this up a little bit because it's a little low. If you go into this select curve section, uh, there's a couple presets that you can choose from. You can see I've already done Aboleth here. Um, for example, bass boost, it's going to bring up your low tones. So if we preview that. You can see it's much boomier. Um, you can do the same thing with a treble boost. And treble really brings out those sharp, hairy things on top. Um, the sounds that um, articulate 
the, the words that the Aboleth is speaking. So what we actually want to do is combine them. And so I've already done an Aboleth. So this is roughly the curve that I decided to go with. Um, it pulls down some of the mid-tones, which I don't really like the sound that happens in that range. Uh, and then it boosts up the bass and it boosts up the treble real high. So if we flatten again and listen, Gotham, Gotham. and then we apply the Aboleth, Gotham, Gotham. you can hear a huge difference there. This bass range really brings that rumble up. And the treble range, uh, with this sort of smooth arc, brings up those uh, more sharp, poignant syllables when it speaks. Uh, and then I've pulled down the mid-ranges here uh, to sort of just cut out those ugly mid-tones. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we go to flatten and then uh, click, click, and click, now we've created some points that we can move. If I pull this up to here, we're gonna hear just some mid-tone ranges. And actually, I'll pull this out so we can move it around a little. Let's just go straight mid-tones, real loud. Gotham, Gotham. So you can hear there, there's a, a weird whispery sound that's too muddled. So we're pulling that out. Um, and by lowering the volume of it, we're clearing up the parts that we like. And if we do the same thing, bring it over here a little bit. Gotham. So you hear that tinny, nasty sound that happened. And then if we come over here to the bassy end. Gotham. Gotham. It's just more muddly sound that we don't need. Uh, so when we do our aboleth here, we are cutting a lot of those tones out. Not completely, they're still in there adding texture to the voice, but we've just brought their volume down so they're not as uh, obtrusive. We're bringing through the stuff that we want. And I think that's perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and we're going to watch our wavelength change again. Big time. So now we see there's a ton more dynamics. Let's jump over to one of these other spots. And so now you can hear with that equalization, you can really hear that rumble, that growl, and you can also hear the hiss in the top end. So we're starting to get that kind of creepy big alien nature to um, our bass voice. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, as always, before we do anything else, we're gonna normalize again. And the reason that we keep doing this is that every time we change our wavelengths, let me come back out here, uh, and change these spikes, we're changing the dynamics of the voice. So when we re-normalize, we're re-squishing it um, to bring the quieter parts up, the louder parts down. Uh, and I just find that it works better if you do it multiple times instead of just once at the end. So now we're going to go to zero. And zero is the target. That's what we want to aim for. Uh, you also can't boost above zero if you go to one here. That goes away. Um, but zero decibels is uh, typically what you're shooting for uh, when you're trying to create audio for speech and stuff. You're trying to go in the negative six to about negative three range. You can see some of it was peaking a little bit. But for the most part, when you watch up here, it's going to be hitting roughly in that range. Um, so we've normalized out again, and that's going to bring us uh, much more in line with what we're looking for. You can see up here, hitting about where we want it. We got a really good rumble on there. Um, and even though all of those big dynamics have sort of gone away, it's not as spiky as it was a second ago. Um, we can fix that later. We can boost that sort of thing up if it gets too quiet. But really, we've dialed in a dynamic range that we want now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to compress. Uh, and adding compression will take these really spiky bits like that and that. Uh, and it's just going to knock the top of them off. Anything above a certain threshold is going to get uh, what's called a compression ratio. We're going to do a, I'll just bring it up. Compressor. We are going to do a four to one ratio, which means anything above our threshold of 
negative 20 dBs uh, is going to start getting this gradual compression uh, from here to here, which is our 20 mark up to zero. Uh, and the closer it is to max, the higher compression it's going to get all the way up to a complete um, four times squish. So it's going to bring it, the volume down four times what it was. Uh, the rest of it you don't really need to mess with. If your settings aren't set up this way, just usually go for about a negative 20 threshold and a ratio of four to one. Um, your attack and release, you want to be real quick. You don't want them lingering, otherwise it can um, start to make your audio sound weird. Noise floor, you usually don't have to mess with. Uh, so that's what we're going to go with. And we're going to hit OK here. And now you see we have cut the tops off these, which makes these quieter parts appear much louder. And then it kind of does an automatic um, normalization at that point. Um, if we go to effects and say normalize again to zero, nothing happens. Uh, so we are basically where we want to be volume wise now. So let's start. I like this one. This is a big meaty one. Perfect. And you can see that our highest level is right around zero. Uh, and it was usually fluctuating in this range, which means it's a pretty acceptable dynamic range for the volume. Uh, and it's looking good. I like that. This is about what the wavelength looked like when I worked on it last time. So we are definitely moving in the right direction. Um, at this point, if there are any points that are too quiet for you, you can go ahead and boost them. And I remember from last time, I think this very starting part was a little too quiet for my liking. Yeah, you can tell for whatever reason I was quieter at the start. Um, and that's why the wavelength is a little bit smaller. And since it's the first thing coming in, I want it to have a little more uh, strike. I want, it to, I want it to hit you with that big boomy sound. So we're just going to highlight it. We're going to go to effects and we're going to say amplify. And 12 dB seems like way too much, but let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's way too much. Let's back that out. Amplify. Let's go like... Let's call it seven. All right, so that you can see now that the wavelength is roughly the size of the one next to it, maybe a little bit bigger, which uh, kind of plays into what I was saying. It's that hard hit at the beginning. So let's hear it. That's much better. It's the same volume roughly. It hits a little bit um, harder on the ears, which is what I want for this big, boomy, scary voice. Uh, and it appears to be in line with roughly everything else. If there were other parts in here that I didn't like, I could go through and amplify them. But I think everything looks good at this point. Um, I think we got good dynamics. So from here, we are actually going to start moving on to making the sound that the monster makes. So let's go ahead and save the project again. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we want to create the big, massive, terrifying scale of the Aboleth. These things are in fifth edition, I think they're large size. In third edition, they were huge and they have the ability to go all the way up to gargantuan and beyond because they're these immortal beings that basically just live forever. So we really want to sell how big and terrifying they are. Uh, if you watched my Beholder video, the intro RP part where the voice gets a little bit deeper, I use what's called a pitch shifter. Um, so if we go in here and go to effects, uh, I don't know exactly where it is in this one. Change pitch right there. Uh, and so that'll just let you move up and down uh, a certain number of pitch, pitch ranges. And it works, but it kind of keeps everything kind of flat. So that's bigger. Um, but the effect that I want to reach actually works better if you slow the voice down. So we're going to keep everything highlighted again. Oops, I already had that. We're gonna keep everything highlighted again. And we're actually gonna to go to change speed instead of change pitch. And depending on your voice and the target voice that you're going for, this number can vary. 
Um, I find that between 75 and 80% is usually pretty good. Um, so for me, uh, it's set at 80 right now because that's what I lose, used last time. So let's go ahead and listen to it. So you can see that creates a much bigger, more rumbly sound uh, because by slowing it down, we're increasing the space between the vibrations rather than just lowering the pitch. Uh, those really deep growly parts are going to growl harder. So we're going to go ahead and apply that. And we're going to see our wavelength change quite a bit. So it's the same thing. It's a little bit longer now because it uh, is 20% slower than it was. But if we listen to it, uh, let's jump into some of these growler, more growly parts here. Solid. So that accomplishes what we want in terms of that depth and bigness and growliness of these massive creatures. Um, the next thing that we're going to apply is a simple phase shifter. And what a phase shifter does is if you ever listen to uh, uh, like music or anything and you kind of hear that sound on uh, like guitar parts or keyboards or something, that's what that is. But we are going to apply it to this because, and it's here under phaser, because the Aboleth doesn't breathe like we do, but it has to breathe somehow. And so in order to represent that kind of alien nature, uh, an undulation in their voice as they're speaking to you, either verbally or in your mind, uh, I put this phase shifter on there and we'll listen to what that sounds like here. Oops. <laughs> And so you can hear, and now it's back off. Let's, let's listen to it without it on. You can hear that just sort of gentle wave. The settings that I have set up on it, um, if we go back and look at them here, uh, our setup such, um, especially with the stages being low and um, no feedback, that it's meant to be sort of a gradual. So as I did it a second ago, this would be more like, That way it's real subtle throughout the entire voice and it's not constantly going up and down and becoming distracting. Um, so we're gonna add that to it. We're gonna go ahead and apply and our thing changes a little bit. So if we go and listen. Now it kind of gets that alien sound, like it's coming in and out at you just a little bit, like it's maybe breathing or it's writhing while it's speaking to you. Uh, real simple change, I think it sounds cool. Uh, if you don't, don't do it. The next thing we want to do is apply an echo. And sometimes echoes can be really annoying. Uh, so you want to use them sparingly. But with the Aboleth, with it being this Lovecraftian, otherworldly horror, I wanted to sell the idea that when it speaks, uh, its voice is sort of all around you. It's echoing in the back of your mind. It's echoing off the cavern walls. Um, and also, if you read the Lords of Madness book, they actually talk about how when an Aboleth speaks, it doesn't speak like we do because it doesn't just have our mouth. It's got all these extra holes and nostrils and stuff all over it. And it actually uses all of those to speak while it's talking, which is why humanoids can't actually speak the Aboleth language properly. Um, so this kind of sells that and that otherworldly nature. So if we preview it, you'll see that I've made it very, very subtle. And that's um, this decay factor here. I have it decay considerably, because if we turn this up to like 0.9, just barely decaying, it's gonna be just playing the same thing twice in a row. And that gets muddy real fast. And we don't want that. Even 0.1 is a little too much. So I go down to 0.5 uh, and you can adjust your delay time too. This is the time from 
the initial sound to when the echo happens. I find one second's usually pretty good, but you can you can move it around to whatever you want. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and apply it. And then we are going to apply it again. And then we are going to apply it one more time. And you can see it's just barely filling in these gaps. Um, and the reason that I'm doing this is it's gonna make the echoes echo. Uh, and that is what I wanted for accomplishing that otherworldly bouncing around in the back of your mind sort of effect. And each echo is gonna be a little bit quieter than the last, so they'll, they'll still be relatively unobtrusive. So let's listen to that. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? It's very subtle, it's there, you can hear it, especially if you're listening for it, but it's not so obtrusive that it's all you can hear and it muddies up the rest of the mix. So I think that's perfect in terms of echo. Uh, once we have applied the echo, we are mostly done at that point. There's another optional step you can do and it's entirely up to you. Uh, that version that I had played for you previously does not do this, but if you wanted to, you could add a reverb effect. Uh, and reverb is going to give it the effect uh, that it is in some sort of room uh, or cavern. Or if you wanted to try to drive home the idea that they're talking in your mind, you could do that via reverb. Uh, I'm gonna bring the room size and the reverberance down just a little bit, because that's gonna be way too much. Uh, and then damping, I have damping at zero right now. Imagine damping as, if you had a big room, zero damping means it's empty. 100% damping means it's got like soundproof stuff on the walls and people in it. Uh, just less stuff to reverberate off of. So we'll do a quick demo of this. And you can see it gives that sort of illusion that you're in a room. And if you go even bigger with the room, it's gonna increase the resonance. And that's like you're in a really big cavern. Uh, if you wanted to give the effect like you're like they're talking in your head or something, where it's not necessarily reverberating off walls, but you want to sell the effect that maybe it's reverberating off the inside of their skull, go with a smaller room size, like five or ten percent. Let's do ten, so it's a little more noticeable. And that way, it's a lot more subtle. Um, reverberance is something you want to be careful with because if you go all the way up. It sounds like you're talking into a bucket. Uh, and if you go all the way down, you might as well not even have it on. Um, so if you want to use reverb, basically just play with your room size, your reverberance, and your dampening. Um, and then you can preview them in here without having to actually apply it. I am not going to apply it. So the last thing that I want to do um, before we are completely done here is I want to equalize it one more time. And the reason that I'm going to do that is that by applying these effects, you've seen that the wavelength has changed a bit and that's affected some of our dynamics. I don't wanna normalize it a bunch anymore because we've done that a lot. The compression is doing its job at this point. We just wanna make sure that it is the crisp sound that we intend it to be. And we can do that with equalization one more time. So if we listen, I think maybe we could benefit by bringing the high tones up a little bit so that the um, consonants and the more sharp striking tones that he's speaking are um, a little more clear. So we'll go back into our equalizer. We don't wanna use that one. Flatten it back out. Um, and again, you could do like a treble boost, which will just bring up those high tones, or you could do a bass boost. Um, I don't think I want to do either of those because I think they're a little too dramatic. I definitely don't want to bring my mid-tones up, so I'm going to slide this back this way to mostly just get the bass, and I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So it's only boosting the bass tones about three decibels and then gradually goes off as we hit our mid-tones. That's good. That just beefs up that low end a little bit. And then we're gonna go here and we're gonna bring our treble range up. We don't wanna go too high or it'll get too tinny. I 
I think we can do even a little bit more than that. And I think that is pretty good. So let's equalize. Actually, let's bring this part down. I don't want to be, again, boosting my midtones. And actually, now that I listen to it again, the bass might be a little too much, so we're going to bring it down just a little bit more. So we're only boosting about one and a half dBs. That's good, and that's not too muddly. So we're going to hit OK. Apply our equalization, it gets huge again. And let's go ahead and give it one final listen all the way through. This should be our finished product. And what I want you to pay attention to is your um, meter up here. We wanna make sure that the loud parts are striking right about here and the rest of it is happening in this range here. Anything lower than that's gonna be too quiet. Anything higher than that's gonna start to overload the audio and it's gonna get ugly. So let's listen to it. Good. If you heard there, we actually went a little too high and we peaked. So I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to go back into our equalizer. And I'm going to bring our treble back down. I think it might have been boosted a little too much. So we're going to make it a little more subtle and do it one more time. That is real good. And I think this part right here might be a little too much, um, but I don't want to toy with it too much because I think that was my original recording. I was a little too loud there. Um, and I don't want to take up any more of your time, but this is the basic process for creating the sound of an eboleth. And that is it. I hope you found that valuable. Uh, we are actually going to be releasing a second part of this, which is going to be the uh, traditional lore and role-playing advice that I usually do for these videos. I wanted to go ahead and separate this one out a little bit to use this making monster space to do this one, since in most cases, you're not gonna be doing this live in a game. This is more or less something that you're gonna be doing to create a cool sound bite, uh, maybe to play when your creature or when your characters encounter the creature at first, um, or to kind of play with them in a dream sequence, something like that. Um, so expect that soon. Uh, I'll be recording that either later today or tomorrow. But if you liked the video, please click like. If you wanna see more like it, please subscribe. If you wanna know when we release new content, hit the little bell. And you can always follow us on Twitter at Initiative Roll, that's R-O-L-E, if you want to stay in touch with us between videos, kind of see what we're doing, and also get uh, announcements for when we're going to be releasing new stuff. Um, so until next time, which should be hopefully relatively soon, uh, feel free to ask me any questions that you might have about Audacity, um, and have a great time terrifying your players with these newfound powers that you have. Thank you.